Hi everybody and welcome back to the Upper Room. This week I wanted to talk about uh, the Lord's Sabbath. So um, I have a friend at work who is a Seventh-day Adventist and they believe that the Sabbath day should still be on Saturdays um, according to the Mosaic Law. So uh, God instructed the Israelites how to live and his laws and uh, like the Ten Commandments as well as other statutes and things that they should do. And one of those things is uh, you shall keep the, sa the Sabbath and you shall keep it holy. No one shall work on that day, not you, not your wife or children or your maidservants or manservants or oxen or even your animals. No one should work because the Lord rested on the seventh day and so the Lord hallowed it. Okay, and so uh, <clears throat> there's a reason for having this seventh day uh, for mankind. Um, <clears throat> now, and I'll go into explaining why now it's on Sunday. So the old covenant is the covenant of Abraham and the covenant of um, with, you know, with Moses, right? So the Mosaic law and what God had instructed the Israelites to do. Uh, and that this was to be <clears throat> a commandment forever, right? To keep the Sabbath holy. Now, Jesus, being God, and the Son of God uh, was once confronted by the Pharisees when him and his disciples were going through a grain field after the grain had been um, harvested. And what's be left behind were the scraps and uh, the remaining uh, ears of wheat. So um, doing going behind... Uh, after um, they have after a harvest and, and and gathering what's left over is called gleaning okay so they were gleaning the wheat as they were going through um, the uh, field so they were picking little pieces of the uh, wheat out and they were eating it because they were hungry okay so Jesus had the apostles doing this he not only had them doing this, uh, do, doing this, he had him doing it on uh, on a Saturday, which was the Sabbath. And so the Pharisees challenged him, and he, they said, um, how, "Why is it that you work on a Saturday? Why is it that you work on the Sabbath and do these things on the Sabbath and eat what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath day?" And Jesus then says to the Pharisees, uh, "Do you not remember when David and his that accompanied him went into the temple and ate the showbread that was only meant uh, that was unlawful for them to eat, but only lawful for the prayer, for, for for the temple priests to eat. Yet David ate it. Okay, and so Jesus here explains to him explains to them that the Sabbath was not made the Sabbath. Uh, Man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for man. So the Pharisees saw the Sabbath as, as the Sabbath day as something that they had to sacrifice, that they had to, um, uh, you know, fast and stay away from uh, work and all these other things, which we are supposed to do. However, they missed the concept of it. The concept of it was that God has created the Sabbath so that man could come into a better relationship with God. It was to show man God's love for them and for, for mankind so that they can have a more stronger relationship with one another, to be closer to one another, so that God would provide for them. Just as God provided the showbread for David in the temple, even though it's unlawful for him to eat according to the temple law. So... It, it has to do with a relation. The Sabbath has to do with a relation with God, more a joyful um, uh, relationship between you and God. So the Pharisees missed that aspect. And then Jesus says that, you know, even though David did these things, you should know that even the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So Jesus is saying even he's Lord of this day. 
So he can do whatever he wants during the day because he's Lord of it. Okay. So here we have something that Jesus did that is contrary to the most, not contrary to the Mosaic law, but just that the Pharisees had misunderstood the meaning of the Sabbath and they misunderstood the authority of Christ. Now, as we go forward in the Gospels, Jesus was then, Jesus then gave the authority to St. Peter to that whatever he binds on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever he looses on earth will be loosed in heaven. So he's giving Peter and the apostles the authority to bind and loose. Okay, so he's giving them the authority to make changes on earth for certain things. And it'll be made true here, and it'll be made true in heaven because they do it. St. Peter is the first pope, Saint, and the apostles are the first bishops of the, of the Catholic Church. So as we go forward, then Jesus is crucified on a Friday. Okay, he's buried that evening, Friday night, and then Saturday is the Sabbath. Okay, so no one came to this tomb, so no one worked, everyone had to stay inside. Sunday came and he resurrected from the dead. Okay, so Christ was resurrected on a Sunday. So, so all the apostles, everything the apostles, everything that the prophets, excuse me, everything that the prophets had wrote about the coming of the Messiah that was given to them from God was all building up to this main point, that Jesus' blood would wash us clean and his people clean of their sins. His, his sacrifice on the cross will be the once and for all sacrifice for all who accept him. And his resurrection from the dead is proof of eternal life for us all who follow him. Okay, this covenant has been made in the Son of God's blood, in Christ's blood, okay? This covenant is an everlasting covenant made forever in God's blood. It is a greater covenant than the covenant of old because this covenant was not broken. All the covenants that came before Christ were broken. God's life hung on the cross in his son. He died and his blood was poured out for our sins. The weightiness of what Christ did outweighs the Mosaic law. However, Jesus didn't come to abolish the old law. He came to fulfill it. Okay? So, because the new covenant made in Christ's blood came true on a Sunday, the church, with authority from Christ, had moved the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday because the covenant in Christ's blood is greater than the covenant of the old because now we are in a new and everlasting covenant. We're not in the old covenant anymore. That's why the Sabbath is on a Sunday. In addition to that, it proved useful in the Roman era, when Romans, when Christianity was outlawed, and when Christians were still celebrating the Sabbath on a Saturday. When, if Romans, and even some Jews, was, uh, Ju Judaism was outlawed for a bit too. If you were saw, seen not working on Saturday, they could question you and see that you're a Christian or see that you could, you're a Jew and they could kill you. They would take you in and kill you, okay? Or throw you in prison or anything like that. So the church, Peter and the apostles, and them, they felt it necessary, seeing that Christ gave them authority to make these types of decisions, and seeing how the weightiness of Christ's sacrifice and his blood in the covenant that has been poured out for us, inviting us into the relationship with God through his son, Christ, Jesus Christ, is greater than the old law, it was changed to Sunday because everything that God promised uh, came true on that day. So, so, so that's why we celebrate on Sunday because 
We are in a new covenant, a new and everlasting covenant made in Christ's blood and and the proofs of all that Christ taught and all that he promised came true on that Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. So that's the explanation of why it moved from Saturday to Sunday because people say you can't change something that God did. God said this would be a Sabbath forever on Saturdays. You know, this is this is the Sabbath day. But then God became man and dwelt among us and rose again on a Sunday. So, okay. <laughs> so, so God is actually the one who changed the Sabbath. Jesus is the one who did this, and the apostles and uh, St. Peter carried it out. So uh, uh, with his blessing, of course, because Christ gave him authority to make those changes. So I hope this uh, helps bring some clarification to some people. Um, uh, uh, I know I'm going to get a lot of backlash with this. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Um, Again, um, you can find my books on Amazon or barnesandnoble.com. Just search by author Jared P. Bisson. Uh, my name is J-E-R-A-D-P-B-I-S-S-O-N. You can find my books there. Um, or just uh, you can add me, uh, subscribe below on YouTube, and, uh, um, and I'll, I'll see you again next week. Yeah.